Oh, hello. Night, Avi. Night, love. Okay, good night. Love you. Good night. <laughs> uh, saying goodbye to the two-year-old. Uh, good night to the two-year-old. Hello, friends. My name is Dan, and this is Daily Art Adventure number 650. Woo-hoo! Another milestone. Continuing the wedding painting that I started uh, the day before yesterday. And I'm doing this trick that if you're a regular... Sorry, let me move you a little bit. If you're a regular, you've seen me do this many times. Where, okay, I'll explain it really quickly. A little while ago, I took my phone. I took a photograph of my painting. That's this image right here. Then in a collage application on my phone, I put these two together in a collage. <laughs> <coughs> Same size, side by side. Now, just doing this helps a great deal often in seeing my mistakes. But I take it one step further. And then I, in my camera app, in my gallery camera app, I, I take this image right here and I flop it. So then I have this up here. So then this becomes, this is a mirror image. So it's, you understand it's parallel to the ancient, old-fashioned, traditional using a mirror to check your portrait work. Everybody should do that. So then when it's in this uh, orientation, I can see my mistakes better because I'm, I'm seeing it in new, in new, through new eyes. Make sense? So then I take a pen and I very carefully number all the changes, one through 12 in this case, 12 changes. But it'd be really hard to go from this image directly into my painting because they're facing the opposite directions. So then I transfer all of these markings to this image. Again, all the time, you know, comparing it to the photograph. And now I'm going from here to here. And I'm almost done with the, uh, the young man, David, the groom, the other night. I, just, I think just have one tiny little mark I need to make uh, on the end of his nose. Looking for a, um, let me show you my palette just for fun. I don't show you my palette really very often. Um, so after several minutes of working on flesh tones, I don't normally do this in a science, this is not a scientific, but you know, I end up with all different shades, some redder, some browner, some darker, some lighter, some bluer, some greener some yellower and so on and so forth. Anyway, so I, I can usually find at this point in the process, I can usually find um, what I'm looking for pretty quick. Okay, I'm going to zoom in as far as I can for you there. And, and, and by the way, I'll show you my really cool look here. Two pairs of glasses at the same time. These are like Dollar Tree, you know, Walmart, um, um, two and three quarter, 2.75 magnification lenses, something like that. Boy, does it help when you're doing stuff like this. I'm actually, believe it or not, in spite of what you see me doing right now, <laughs> I'm really trying to avoid the trap, perhaps we could say, of, of getting too too fussy. <laughs> I know that's crazy. What are you talking about? You're wearing magnifying glasses and you're using a, you know, Winsor Newton number one brush. I know, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to make all of my strokes, of course, singular like that. One stroke and I'm done. So that even though these are really small portraits, oh, I need to get that. He's got a black spot under his, right under his nose. We should be, so let me diminish that a little bit. Um, yeah, so I am trying to paint in a painterly manner, even though I'm painting so small. And yes, feel free to ask me, is that a challenge? Of course it's a challenge. <laughs> it's, it's really, yep, it's hard. I'm hoping that all these, all these, 
miniature portraits that I'm doing in my wedding painting career these days is, is going to pay off in my ability to do larger portraits. <laughs> I'm hoping. It's been so long since I did a larger portrait. I'm not sure that's going to be the case, but... Whoops, the hole in his ear is not in the right place, is it? Isn't that the way it goes with portraits? You just keep seeing one thing after another. And here's a funny little cheat I'm doing at this size. Sometimes for, for dark details, I'm actually using this pencil. Isn't that a hoot? Don't, please don't tell anybody. I'd be completely embarrassed. It would ruin my reputation, as if I have a reputation to ruin. But he did a little red on his earlobe. All right, let me look at him now. That looks pretty good, I think. Um, so this is clearly not my last uh, hit on this painting because uh, all the rest of the paintings, all the rest of the canvas still needs to be finished. And I'm anxious to do a, a glaze over the whole thing. And of course I can't do a glaze over this face until, uh, until this now, until this dries. For some reason, I was mixing up this. Um, oh yeah, the top of his ear. That's right. I knew it was something, and then I forgot what I had mixed it up for. This was really kind of a special wedding for me the other night. Um, I did not know. I'm, I was working for the parents of the groom, who are old friends of ours, and I did his younger, older brother um, about two years ago. And so this was the brother number two. And I didn't know that I knew the group, the bride's family. So my wife and actually and I have actually known uh, both families for many years. Never been extremely close, of course, or I would have known that <laughs> we would have been invited to the wedding. <laughs> but they're good, good community, old church friends. So it was really, it was really special. And um, I already probably went on too much the other night <laughs> about <laughs> Um, how beautiful the, 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 a couple they are! I mean, really, they were they were both. It was Ken, it was Ken and Barbie wedding. It really was. Um, just neither here nor there. Of course, we don't value people according to their physical uh, beauty, <laughs> do we? No, no. <laughs> one of the one of the fun aspects, if I if I may, may digress just a little bit. Um, of this particular wedding is that uh, I, I, I think I've done about 120, maybe 150 weddings, I don't know, over the last 12 years. Um, and uh, again, not, not making a great judgmental statement, but it's really special. Um, you know, there's so many, there are so many symbols in the wedding ceremony, in the wedding, and in the wedding uh, reception. So many things that we do because the tradition used to be, <laughs> I say this with a little bit of tongue in cheek, the tradition used to be that the couple had not slept together. <laughs> and and uh, again, at the risk of <laughs> getting in trouble, out of the 120 weddings that I've done, I think there's probably about one handful of, of 
of weddings that I've done where the bride and groom are not living together. And uh, this, in fact, was, yes, one of those, one of those weddings where so that's just kind of special, quite special. I'm, I'm trying to soft pedal it because I'm not trying not to sound religious. Yuck. But uh, celebratory. All right, so I am done with the... Um, It's for some reason, my monitor, here we go, there we go, my, let me see if there's anybody left in the chats yet. Hey, Alex, Ontario, excellent. Oh, good, want to see some more of my cross-hatching and cartooning. Thank you, Alex, I would love to do some. Um, I'll be looking for a, an excuse then to do that. My fellow Ontario win. <laughs> Forget that. Fellow C Canadian. Canuck. Um, I was born in uh, Hamilton. Probably a long time. Probably about the time that your parents were <laughs> being born. Or your grandparents, one or the other. Um, all right. He looks great. Now, same, same drill here, right? Um, Photograph that mirror, see the mistakes, mark them, then transfer here. And it's just kind of a matter of like, okay, here we go. Take your breath, take a breath, and get to work. Does that make sense? Um, and it looks like I'm, I'm using all, all. Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sable. Looks like I'm using all sable brush. All right, number one. Her hairline, top of her forehead, needs to be higher. I sort of do often have to sort of um, psych myself up. Or, or just in my inner, yeah, inner psyche, inner person, just hunker down. Just say, okay, here we go. Whew, take a breath in, you know, this will be, this will be maybe 30 minutes of, of work. One, two. Oh, here's, here's the big, big thing on this one. Her eye. <laughs> I painted it twice and moved it in a correct direction both times, but I still didn't move it up far enough. In other words, I when first my first rendering of her eye for some reason, I had it quite a bit too low, which is unfortunate because it's, I've rendered her eye very nicely. I just rendered it in the wrong place, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I've talked before about glasses, my Superman glasses on. <laughs> I've talked before about how to move a feature, like an eye or a mouth or a nose or an ear in, um, in portraiture. Um, it's not as hard as it sounds. Not, and I'm, I'm talking about, and I'm, here I'm talking to you, my fellow portrait painters, um, because this, this will happen especially in oil, oil or acrylic. Watercolor, no, that's a completely different, completely different ballgame. You can't paint this way in watercolor. You have to get the drawing correct first. Um, what happens, n not infrequently, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say, in portraiture is that, you know, two-thirds, three-fourths through the process, you have a, a perfect, you name it, mouth, ear, eye, nose, rendered. And then you discover to your shock and dismay and your everlasting humiliation, <laughs> let's be dramatic while we're at it, that your beautifully rendered, in this case, eye, is in the wrong place. Now, anybody that's done 
portraiture, in my, any amount of portrait, portraiture, unless you're some kind of freaky genius. If so, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> um, you've, you've had this happen. You have had this happen. Um, the good news is it's not as hard to move a feature as you think. If you've got it rendered, moving it is not as hard as it seems, as you would first think. Um, generally speaking, you, you start at the, like if you have to move the eye up, you start making moving at the top of the eye and work down. If you have to move the eye down, you would start at the bottom of the eye with the bottom feature that next, 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 next. I didn't describe that very well. I've, I've described it other times. I just don't want to take the time to do it right at the moment. Um, I'm going to mix, try to mix up a color for the white of her eye. <laughs> now here's a, I, I absolutely believe the, the fact that we call the white of the eye the white of the eye really messes up a lot of beginner portrait painters because this, we use the word white, so we're inclined to make it far, far, far too bright, too light because it has the name white. Um, and that's, again, that's the kind of thing that only afflicts beginners. But if you're a beginner, Take note. <laughs> you will make that mistake unless you make it a point not to make it. So I'm mixing up a very, probably a number four gray, possibly number five. That's on a 10 scale. You know, one is white, 10 is black. And very mid tone gray. And of course, at this size, it's <laughs> anybody's it can even see what I'm doing hardly. Here's another trick that I've learned, especially, well, for all portraits, but especially for small ones like this. Um, when you're painting a detail, start with the furthest away object and paint forward. In other words, paint the eyeball and then paint the eyelashes or the eyelid after it and the eyelashes after that. Does that make sense? Or if you're doing a mouth, do the, the teeth and then the lips. Do the lips because they're closer to you. That's just a really crazy tip. A crazy tip, but it, it really helps to, under, to understand that. Um, okay, let me move now to um, the slight, slight shadow crease underneath her eye. And then in, in Lots of eyeshadow above her eye. My my go-to colors for flesh tone are pretty pretty well established, and I usually I'm telling my students all the time, no no don't take notes <laughs> about about what colors to use, you know, because you paint with your eyes, not not by recipe. If you have to write down, but I'm going to make an exception here. This, this is, you can write this down. <laughs> and again, it's, it's just one recipe. It is by no means the only recipe. It's just one, one way to um, think about flesh tone. Okay, so you got that? It's just one way to do it. Uh, but my go-to is, of course, titanium white. I'll start at the light end of the spectrum. Titanium white. Then Naples yellow, optional, Naples yellow. You can get by without that um, because you can use yellow ochre. But one of those you have to have, either yellow ochre or Naples yellow. I usually have both on my palette, so it's no big deal. Um, and then um, oxide red raw umber, and sometimes black. Black is very optional. Now, if you, especially if you don't have black, then you need an ultramarine blue. Okay. 
Now, take a breath. Now let's do the, well, really, the reds are the same reds I use all the time. Naphthol Crimson, Scarlet Lake, it's some kind of orange. There, that's it. That's enough. I'm going to try a trick I've done a couple times before. I just did it on the guy's face a little while ago. I have here a, a graphic arts tool, just a, a, an awl, I guess you could call it, a super fine awl. And I'm going to scratch on her eyeball and scratch through the dark paint that I just put there and see if I can get a hint of a, a glint, a reflection, and I did. And then same thing in the white of her. I'm going to scratch that. Nope, that did not work. Not quite as well. Okay. Yeah, it's a little trick there. Um, I have to move the bridge of her nose up. Well, I haven't moved her eyebrow yet either. Ah, but her nose is bothering me a lot, so I'm, go I'm, I'm getting out of order here. Okay, I'll show you another tip. This is worth, here's another one worth knowing. So I'm trying to mix up a very pale highlight, a titanium white and, and a Naples yellow just warm white because she has this lovely <coughs> highlight right along the bridge of her nose and according to my calculations I need to move the bridge of her nose up now I don't know how well you can see that but the that's just about as skinny a line as I can make with this brush now this is not a it's not a high quality brush like one of these it's just a cheap one. That's right. The point is, I've made a... Um, I, I painted the highlight first. And it's way too fat. And, and it, so here's the trick. Anytime you need to paint, especially in portraiture, because this, certainly, this kind of thing certainly comes up in portraiture, that you have to do a really skinny line, like a wrinkle, if you're doing a portrait up close, you cannot paint a line with a, with, a, with a brush or anything. You cannot create a line that is skinny enough to represent a wrinkle, or in this case, to represent the highlight of a nose. So what you do is you put the light mark down and then make it, and then carve it up. Make it skinny by painting up to it and painting, carving, does, does this make sense here? I'm carving the, um, like if, if my white line was this, I magnified a hundred times, my white line was this fat, then I took, here's my thumb, here's the brown paint, then I, took the brown paint and covered up the white line and made it this skinny. Does that make sense? So now that white highlight is approximately the, the width that I'm looking for. Very, very, very fine line. Finer than you can paint. I think more changes on her face than I had than I had numbered. That makes me a little bit nervous. Oh, let me go back to her eyebrows, though, because that's, that's not in the right place now.
Um, I am going to do something I don't do very often, but the position of her mouth is bothering me so much that I think it'd be easier just to wipe it out, wipe it off, and then um, reconstruct it from scratch. Now, here's a, I'm, at least I'm showing you a lot of good tips and tricks if there are any emerging portrait painters out there. I have to walk across the room to my 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 one of my desks and I'm looking for usually can, here we go putting my hands on a curved exacto knife blade I forgive me I know exacto is a brand but you know what I mean that's what most people know it as it's a very useful tool when you're doing, whoops, when you're doing fussy stuff. Whoops, sorry, I don't shake any guys all over. A, I, I would say, do not try this with a straight exacto blade. <laughs> so, can you, can you see that? It's a curved, Shot. When I painted this the other night, in order to render her teeth, of course, I had to put a fairly thick little, little impasto, a little bit of thickness uh, of white to, to get her teeth to look bright. And now that I'm moving her mouth, that little pile of paint that little impasto does not serve me well. At the same time, there was, there was a similar bump on her uh, cheek, so I have just taken it. So there you go. The curved blade is the answer for that. I'm just going to clean up, so to speak, applying a very thin layer of mid-tone flesh tone here to cover up most of that stuff, as I said. And I believe yeah, her, her whole chin is going to come up a little bit. Let me look at this. Yeah, I think that's right. But as you can see, I'm really, um, painting from scratch. Now I'm not using any of my, it's not like just a matter of following this and tweaking little things because I've changed a lot. And I'm actually going to, again, a little bit unconventional. One of the reasons I like doing the pencil is it doesn't add any more um, wetness, so to speak, paint to the canvas. In fact, if anything, I'm scraping, scraping paint off the areas where I'm making these marks. Let me look at that. Nope. Here we go again. I almost can't imagine why this could even be interesting to watch, and that explains why <laughs> not very many people are watching, of course. Only, I think this could only be interesting, honestly, to, to people like me who are struggling to do portraits to watch somebody else go through the 
similar kinds of, of struggles that we go through. I've got light stuff on my brush right now, so let's go ahead and get that little bit of light on her cheek. I'm having a hard time getting the brush to, to put any paint down on the on the painting, you know what I mean? It just slides around and won't, won't get off the brush and get on the... There we go. Add a little bit of liquid to it. Uh, I, have a, I have a feeling I'm going to need to uh, look at this, her whole face one more time. Use in a mirror, so to speak, using the mirror trick. But for the moment, let's go ahead and do her teeth. Um, you have to watch out when you're doing teeth, just as you do when you're doing the whites of the eyes. You know, what color are teeth? Mr. Artist, Mrs. Artist, what color are teeth? Yeah, and you, an artist does not say white, right? All our non-artist friends say, why? Well, we know better if we go, well, maybe, maybe, but no, probably not, probably not. The lips are quite dark red. Now here on, on a woman's lips, in a painting, I am likely to cheat just a little bit, and of course it's very possible that, that my photograph actually didn't capture the color. And I'd rather err just ever so slightly. Now, I'm not talking about 1950s gigantic honking strawberry lips. No, 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 no. You know, Lucille Ball lips. No, 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 no. But I'd rather err just a tiny bit on the side of um, red than, than muted. So I'm mixing up here a brighter, brighter red. And just try to figure out where the highlight would be. Now, I can go lighter than that. Add a little bit of pale flesh tone to that pile of red. A bit pinker. Does that make sense? It's sort of similar to, you know, when you're painting uh, figures, you know, you s stretch them out just a little bit. My ideal would be to stretch them out enough so that they wouldn't, the, the audience, the viewer, wouldn't say, oh man, you stretched them out. You know, no, um, John Singer Sargent certainly did that. He had no problem making an 11 head tall woman. But I don't, I don't want to do that. I'd rather have them go, huh, boy, I look good there. Did you stretch me? Did you make me tall? It, that's about, if I get somebody to say that to me, that's, that's just about right. Now her cheek on the far side. She had one earlier, but she lost it. <laughs> In the rough and tumble of being painted, she lost. Whoops. Oh, speaking of old tricks. So here's another one. Um, a dull pocket knife. I don't mean like I... It dulled it on purpose, just I haven't sharpened it, so that's how dull it is. It's sometimes it's easier to scrape something off with a dull knife than it would be to do anything else. Let me try that again. Yeah, rats. 
I'm gonna have to look at her face again. I was really hoping to nail, get her finished tonight. She's real pretty in my painting, but I'm afraid it doesn't look enough like her. Pretty is not good enough <laughs> when you're doing a portrait. It has to has to be has to look like the person. can describe my level of skill in portraiture pretty accurately. Here it is. It's I'm good enough that I can capture a likeness. You can always pretty you can always tell who it is. I'm not so I get about half the time, I would say, on a regular size portrait when I'm not doing this crazy miniature stuff. I get what you might call a perfect likeness or virtually perfect. So that's how good and how bad I am. <laughs> I bad about well, 500, that doesn't translate in baseball. You can tell who the person is, but you get the strange sensation that something's not quite right. <laughs> That's so. I'm sort of okay with that. It, obviously, portraits are it's not my. Main, my, main part of my career. It might be someday. I'm open to that possibility. I really enjoy portraits a lot because of the challenge, simply because of the challenge. Okay, I'm going to fix her teeth. The curve of her uh, top lip. Is not quite right. And her front tooth, very front tooth, should needs to move forward. Yeah, about a hundredth of an inch. Honestly. Um. Okay, now I'm going to do a little highlight on her cheek. I mean, I mean on her chin. Whenever possible, I try to do a, a single stroke. As opposed to piddling. Put it down and leave it is, is the objective anyway. Or forehead. I haven't been up there in a long time. It needs a lot of work. You wondered when I was going to get back to that, didn't you? I did too. Uh, let me check my numbers, see what, one, two, three, four, still not quite right, her far eyebrow, there we go, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh yeah, there's, uh, there's something wrong with her, her neck, oh yeah. That's, all, that's a horrible mess right there, but I'll clean it up pretty easily. I think that's better. Now, yeah, let me, let me do some other things. Sometimes, very often when you're doing a portrait, and again, you guys who have tried it, um, many times you, you feel like something is off. You know, like you might say something like, I don't know, it seems like there's something wrong with her nose or her cheek. And, but then after a bit of working, hopefully not ruining, you go, oh, no, it's not her cheek at all, it's her hairline. Because everything affects, everything impacts everything else when you're doing a portrait. Um, and by the way, you, again, you artists, I'm sure you know this if you've done any or many commissioned portraits, 
Um, <laughs> this is kind of funny. You cannot take the word of a non-artist, especially if it's if he or she is is the subject. Um, now you have to pay attention to what they say because they're telling you something, but they are typically they're probably not an artist, right? So the non-artist will say things like, "I don't know. I think my nose looks a little too pudgy, sharp, fat, wide, long, short, up, down." You know, they'll use they use anatomical terms. You're, you know, like my nose, my eye, my mouth looks this or that or the other. And I would say about 95 times out of 100, what they say is not at all correct. Now you have to, you pay attention to them because they probably are pointing out some error in your painting, but you don't believe them. <laughs> you don't, <laughs> how do I say this? You don't take what they say at face value. Like, oh, your nose is too, huh? Okay, well, let me, let me, let me fix that. No, 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 because you're, because it's most likely what they're seeing is not actually what's the matter. There is something the matter. That's, that's what I want to say. You know, if they feel like something's not right, they're probably correct, as much as we don't like to hear it. Um, they probably are touching on something real, but they're probably not using the right language. My face looks too wide. My face looks my, you know, whatever. Um, so you have to listen to what they say, but then don't do what they say, because that, that's probably not the right, the correct, correct analysis. There is something wrong with something somewhere, <laughs> but it's probably not the thing that they are saying. Does that make sense? You have to be careful then. Don't go jumping off into doing what the client says. But there is something, again, I'm just repeating myself now, as much as we hate, believe me, as much as we hate to hear it, um, Right. At the moment, that looks pretty good to me. But who knows how it will look tomorrow. Ah, I've got, I'm glad I kept my knife here. I've got another one of those. Oh, I didn't keep my knife here. I put it, <laughs> I've got my sharp pointy thing, my miniature awl, AWL that is. And if, as you may know, oh good, I see several chats here. I look forward to getting to them. Um, trying to do a portrait this small on this kind of canvas is also nuts, frankly, right? I mean, the bumps in the canvas literally get in my way often. Um, but on the other hand, if I was painting on a smoother, even smoother than this canvas, then what, then what would happen? Then I'd be even more tempted or more <laughs> inclined to get even more too fussy. I'm already too fussy. It'd be worse if I was if I were painting on a smoother canvas. So I'm allowing the bumps of the canvas to help keep me a little bit abstract. Not <laughs> not much. <coughs> now an interesting thing. Uh, one more thing, maybe, before we go. Um, the other night at the wedding, everybody came by and said, Oh, it looks just like her. Now, first of all, you have to be careful when non-artists say that many times. I mean, they've never seen an artist like you or me, I'll say. They've never seen a real artist, so they don't really know. But And they want to be nice, and they know that you're trying to get a likeness, so they'll say, Oh! It looks just like her, and they're being nice. So watch out. Watch out for that being nice stuff. Don't, you know, say, yeah, thanks, or whatever. You know, thank you very much. But don't Again, don't believe them, <laughs> because they might just be blowing smoke. <laughs> they just, they're just trying to be nice, which is nice of them. We like people to be nice, but don't believe them. But I think what 
I think what actually ha happened is typical the other night. I was close enough that everybody could tell who it was supposed to be. But look at all the changes I've made today, you know. So how could I have been close the other night when I've made these changes? Well, I want to answer that question in a different way than you may expect. The painting, uh, her, her, both of their faces the other night were considerably more abstract than they are right now. And um, there's a greater forgiveness, a greater leeway when you when you paint loose. Um, you just have to get close to get credit for a likeness. Am I making sense? But the tighter you get, like I'm doing right now, the tighter, more accurate, more fastidious you paint, then the more accurately you have to paint. So there's, there's a trade-off. Um, if you want to get um, more accurate and realistic, and more tight, you can, but don't forget that as you do that, the, your errors, so to speak, your inconsistencies are going to show up more and more clearly. Whereas if you keep, if you can keep the brush strokes uh, rougher, looser, then you can get away with more in, um, imperfections and still get credit for for a likeness, and that's part of what was happening the other night. It was more, it was more loose, and it did look quite a bit like her. But, um, of course, when I got, you know, then home. Now, normally, let me explain. Um, I used to finish all my wedding paintings the night of the reception. Well, if the reception went, like, till normal, till 11.30 or 12. Um, in the last couple years, though, or no, in the last year, that has changed because I've gotten myself, for better or worse, into this crazy business of doing like this a real portrait this is nuts <laughs> doing real portraits um but don't bother me i'm sort of enjoying it part of the reason i'm enjoying this is because i feel like i'm challenging i uh, know not i feel like i am challenging myself um Almost done. At least, I mean, done with their faces for now. And then I'll end the broadcast here. This is modification number 12 right here. Here's a funny, here's a funny little tip also. I've, I've been full of funny little tips tonight, haven't I? Um, for brunette hair. Now, um, this is really at a very, very elementary level. So don't, <laughs> I want to say don't judge me. <laughs> At a, at a very elementary level, because, of course, you always paint with your eyeballs, not by formula. But it just so happens that um, raw umber, at least, I'll say the raw umber made by um, Soho oil paints, is just about the, the perfect starter color for um, brunette here. All right, and there was, I was starting to say something else a while ago, and then I took a detour and forgot. Oh, well, if it's important, it'll come back. I say I'm doing this. To, oh, I used to finish all my portraits um, the night of, but I wasn't doing, I was doing more. Like last week's, by the way, if you saw my, my, um, um, my wedding portrait, oh, the last one, that you, it's still on. By the way, I, I posted a bunch of stuff on my YouTube community board, finished paintings. So if you want to see any of the paintings that I've been working on the last couple months, they're all there now. All of my, all six of my big paintings that I've finished so far this year. Are all... On, on YouTube. Um, dang, she looks pretty good. I think I'll look at her with fresh eyes tomorrow and I might change my mind about that. But 
And I think he looks great. All right, little break. Here's I'm 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 going to keep broadcasting, but let me break for what I'm going to do here. Gonna get this out of the way. Ah. All right, whoops. I am upstairs, by the way, in my upstairs studio. I have two studios. Talk about a, and now that I have one in the garage, I guess I have three. <laughs> and my van is a studio on wheels, so. Um, I have two studios because for 30 years I've been a freelance illustrator and, and my, uh, my illustration equipment is quite different from my oil painting equipment. So when we moved into this house 12 years ago, my wonderful wife was shopping for me and she um, wanted a, a painting studio on the main floor. So that's what I have downstairs. But I still have um, an illustration studio. I'll, oh, by the way, I'll, just for fun, I'll give you a quick tour. It's not exactly ready for, for company or tour, but just for what it's worth. Let me turn you down a little bit more. Whoops, 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 whoops. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry about that. So there's a picture of my family, by the way, from about, oh, 10 years ago. Aren't we lovely? I wasn't going to do this. And there's a, an illustration I did of my dad's, my dad, he's in the lower right, my dad and mom, and my dad's ancestors. Homage to my dad's ancestors. And there's my airbrush uh, table. It's like, I think I've got seven airbrushes over there and several compressors and a hose that goes down to the ground. Anyway, used to do a lot of airbrushing. Um, there's a pencil sketch of me, some calligraphy on the closet doors there, and just a bunch of artwork. And here's my, my main uh, illustration desk. Um, has been for decades. Okay, I'll finish the rest of the way around since I've gone that far. And there's my computer desk. There's me. There's uh, my nice book, one of my many bookshelves. There you go. That was free of charge. <laughs> um, as some of you know, I, we've, we had a young lady living with us for 10 months and she had a single size, twin size air mattress up here. Uh, fortunately, she was very good about making her bed. So we, we got along all right, but she's moved out. Woohoo! So now I am free to come back and take over. All right, here's, here's just, I was going to show you. Um, this is not her face, but this is their, the pose that I'm working from. And uh, I can see a couple little changes that I'm going to make right away. His sleeve needs to be a little wider and come up higher. So I would do this with a bigger brush. But I've got this in my hand, so I'll just go ahead and do it. I, the main thing I wanted to change was the, his collar right here. As I was doing his face, I realized that needs to come up. And he doesn't have, in my painting, he doesn't have a white shirt at all. So <laughs> we'll give him a white shirt before we're done here. Hey, let me share, this is a good time for me to, again, another little trick. Um, <laughs> it's Matt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, it's a great comment, sir. I can't wait to get back. All right, let me show you. So I'm in my phone just like all the rest of you, a traditional, um, traditional phone app, right? Camera app. Let me get, make sure I'm on the screen. All right, I'm going to edit this. Let me show you a whoops. Let me show you a trick. Edit tone. This is for painting the the grooms, or anytime you have to paint a dark suit. Okay, the first thing I did is I 
way overexposed the image and then I jacked up the um, contrast and I'm just going to zoom in on just his this is a tip good trick for painting dark any dark things including like a dark tux okay so I don't know if you can see let me try to get close so here's what is no that's not what is here's what his tux looked like I'm gonna hang on I've got it upside down for a reason but let, let me fix that now All right, so earlier on, I mean, just a few minutes ago, that's what his suit looks like. You can kind of see some stuff, but not much, okay? But here is the image that I just created. I can see way more detail. So I use this to finish the details on the painting. And as you may remember, that's something that still needs to be done because at the moment his painting is his suit his suit tux is almost just a black blob but I will use again I will use this image okay let me do a little bit of it since you you guys since we're still here now here is where listen to this this some of you some of you traditionalists this will drive you bazoic <laughs> It's even worse than berserk. I just dipped my brush in pure tea. I think it's ivory black, but I'm not sure. It could be carbon black, I'm not sure. I have, you know that old thing, don't use black? Yeah, well the real rule is don't misuse black. And in fact, if you are trying to paint an object like a black tux that is in real life pitch black, and you're gonna have a hard time getting there using what I call and some people call chroma black that is a black that you make up by mixing transparent colors together and that you know again 99% of the time I use chroma black I don't use black to paint with except and I learned this doing wedding paintings except if you're painting an object that itself is pitch black and you probably would be helped, in fact, to use um, some real pure black. And how about that? that messes all messes with all your education, doesn't it? So I'm doing. Believe, and I, you probably can't see the marks that I'm making. I'm sorry about that, but I can. In other words, the the black stuff that I'm putting right now is just slightly blacker. So I'm doing some creases and then you can imagine. So where am I going with this? Um, it's been a long time since I gave this formula. So let me give it. How do you paint? If you want to paint something realistic and it's, it's a modeled, rounded, shaded, and perhaps complex object. So all people, animals, grass, trees, clouds, you know, I'm talking about anything that's not just flat, right? How do you paint it? There is a formula, and if you don't know the formula, this is your lucky day, because I'm about to give it to you. The, the formula is mid-tone all over. And that's what I had a little while ago, even though it, it was mid-tone mid for a black tuck, so it was very dark, right? Mid-tone all over. So if you're doing a blue sky, blue, mid-tone blue all over then dark details, then light details, in that order, not reverse, not the reverse order. Now you can do that, that series over and over and again, mid, dark, light, mid, dark, light, mid, dark, light. Uh, but uh, if you're not familiar with that, that, that process, then that's good. So I, did, I had mid-tone black tux, then I did dark, and I'm going to come back and do um, the highlights on his tux. So what are the highlights on a black tux? <laughs> the answer is very, very dark gray, right? And I usually do the highlights in at least two levels. So here's, it may not even be dark enough, but 
in the product. And with a, with a black tux, I think you, you'd rather err on the side of lightness than darkness. Does that make sense when you're painting a black object in a painting? You'd rather err on the side of it's slightly too light than slightly too dark because if it's a dark object and you make it too dark, it's just going to create just a complete black hole in your painting and you don't want that. So I will do two applications of gray highlights on, on his tux and I can do these pretty, pretty quickly. And I want, I don't need the back of his tux to be sharp as a razor. So I'm actually making that kind of fuzzy. There's a good tip for some of you. Right, do I want people looking at this bride and groom and staring at the, at the groom's spine? No, of course not. So I'm not going to, I am not going to um, make the, let the, the spine, his back be razor sharp as I just fuzzed it out a little bit. It already was fuzzy. I just made sure it stayed fuzzy. There's his pocket. That's a nice little detail. Much better, much, much better. I, I will admit, one of the funny little things I enjoy about painting weddings is I enjoy painting white things and I enjoy painting black things. <laughs> so I so often get to paint a white dress and a black tux. And uh, it's just kind of fun. It's an, like, it's an extra challenge to paint white things and black things. In a word, how do you paint white things? The answer is you don't use white paint until the very, 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 very last layer. So with hold back on the white paint. If you're painting snow, you use every color in the rainbow before and the final last application you do a little bit of pure or nearly pure white depending on of course what the light of the sun is doing. So you, you watch out for that. Same thing with black. Do you? My underpainting was a mid-tone black <laughs> and it was transparent. That was, that was indeed chroma black mixture of probably mostly um, oxide red and ultramarine blue. And the dress, her dress is not finished yet, but even as it is right now, um, again, it has every color in the rainbow in it, so to speak. Cool, warm, and everything in between. Not speaking very technically there. <laughs> That's probably good enough on his tux. I don't know if you guys can see that. That might have been really boring because I'm not sure that our, you know, our technology can pick up that. But I believe I'm going to stop there. It's nearly 11 o'clock here. My wife is out of town <clears throat> for several days, so I don't even want me to get anybody to go to bed with, so I'm, like, I'm likely to work late. <laughs> um, married 39 years, and my wife and I are evidently one of those rare couples who we actually, <coughs> our circadian rhythm is virtually identical. We go to bed at the same time, and we get up at the same time, most of the time. So that's kind of nice. No, that's not the case with a lot of people. All right, some fun comments. Alex from Ontario wants more cartoons and cross-hatching. Deal. Um, I'll look for an excuse to do that, Alex. Hi, Matt. It's Art Stuff. Good to have you on board. You have to sell them on a six-foot painting so you can paint a life-size eyeball. <laughs> Exact. Good point. What size wedding painting would you like? <laughs> Can I interest you in the new <laughs> cosmic six by six foot <laughs> wedding painting? <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> uh, Matt says, scraping the paint off for a smooth, finer detail work surface. Excellent tip. Good. Thanks, Matt. Glad to hear it. I see some red in her face. Oh, that I, that I missed? That's very possible. I will take a look at that. Monkey Trap. <laughs> There's a new name. I don't know if you're still watching, but thank you for joining me. Hi there. 
Uh, laughing face, good. <laughs> Often, if the portrait captures the essence, people will say it looks just like him, her, even if the proportions. You are exactly right. You must be an artist. You must be a, maybe do portraits, monkey trap? Because um, you are exactly correct. In fact, for, really, for wedding portraits, the most important thing is their, their stance, their, their, their body position. And uh, I'm quite happy. I, I, I did this one, by the way, without any grid or anything. I just, just drew this one, so I'm kind of a little bit of like, woohoo, <laughs> maybe I'm getting better. Look, Ma, no, ro no hands. <laughs> um, you found a cool studio. It is. I'm immensely thankful for my studio. Um, the closest I ever get to a church service is, <laughs> is listening to Danny Finch lies about painting. <laughs> That's great, Franz. <laughs> and all God's people said, Amen. <laughs> uh, Evangelize about painting. That's good, Franz. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're in Germany, right? I believe. Yeah. Uh, Susan, California. Um, yep, working in the wedding painting. Dan is the portrait preacher. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, good. You like the windows. Good. I will, too, especially after especially after I <laughs> get them further. You guys are funny. <laughs> Matt, I hear the word. <laughs> Artist Church Service, tonight serves portraits by Preacher Dan. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you. I am I'm getting looser in my old age, aren't I? <laughs> um, oh, should have had her leg up and arm trailing in the air, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, this is actually, this is the first time that I've ever, ever painted uh, a bride and groom. Um in this this kind of position and and they asked for it specifically even before the before the event as we were texting back and forth last week I love it I, I, this is this is going to be one of my uh because the construction of the whole painting with the architecture is nice and the bride bending back is nice um let me point over here again for a second um one of the things it, i can't wait to get to is and her faces those faces look pretty good maybe i'm done that'd be nice is um i need to pull some focus away from the bottom edge by glazing her dress so that the lightest part of her dress is really <coughs> up here um <clears throat> and of course everything else needs just a little bit not i'm not going to go tight back here at all but it needs just a little bit of evening out it's almost actually too much energy in here i need to calm some things down a little bit before I finish. Um, <clears throat> Matt says, I saw an old Dan Nelson album, All Good Gifts, on eBay for two ninety nine. Is this the same Dan Nelson? That's a good question. Hi, Uncle Sixty. <laughs> Boy, we almost got, we almost missed you. <laughs> <laughs> good to have you on board. <laughs> oh, monkey trap. Good, you're still here. Yes, you do portraits. I'm glad to hear that because you sounded like it. That's good. Too many trees. That's good. Cut out some of those trees. Get out the chainsaw. That's right. <laughs> I will marry you to a stranger. <laughs> I will. Ah, Franz. <laughs> the People's Republic of Illinois. <laughs> Not German at all. German names, but in, in Illinois. I'm glad to know. That's fun to know. All right. <laughs> oh, you guys. Thank you for your good chats. I appreciate it. Thank you for your good company. Um, as I've said several times before, put me in a room like this, painting, and, and I turn on a podcast. I'm pretty happy. But But put me in a room painting with you guys watching. I'm off the charts, <laughs> but all good things must come to an end. It's 11 o'clock, and I'm going to go do something else, read a book maybe. Um, start preparing my next sermon. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching.